carefuling. Hello, people of the internet. It's your favorite sporty spice impersonator in a lab coat here with another truck review. Today I have a 2022 Ram 1500 4x4 Bighorn Edition. A wise man once said, it's better to stick your head up a bull's ass than to take Sarah's word for it. So we're gonna put this on the lift and do that. Well, 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 what do we got here? Whoa, oh, it's one of the step. I didn't know it had this. The little step, stepper doodle. Oh, check that out. It's got a raw aluminum spare. It's full size, it's got a matching tire, but it doesn't match this one, but it, it's a nice looking spare. Tow package, it'll tow approximately this much. Now I've essentially stuck my head up this Ram's rear end. Uh, we can get a look at the rear axle. Axe, oh, like the rose kind, not the balloon knot type. This one is equipped with the 3.92 limited slip rear end. If you'll notice back here, this Ram is void of any leaf springs. It has a five link rear end with a traction bar. Link, link. Additionally, you'll notice this one does have the optional $1,800 air ride suspension because somebody went absolutely nuts adding options to this one. That's a weird bump stop. It looks like an eyeball and it's socket just like bulging out. Hey, there's a hoop back there. I don't know why I get such a kick out of these, but caution, consult your book of wrenches before touching tall grass. Anti-sway bar, 24 mil. That is the automotive equivalent of a Q-tip for your auto leveling headlights. And that's it. There's only one muffler on this truck aside from the two little resonators at the tailpipe. <laughs> This Ram in particular has a ton of steel skid plates underneath here because it's equipped with an optional $2,700 backcountry package. And this one being the 5.7 liter V8 Hemi with the mild hybrid system weighs in at just over 5,100 pounds. The skid plate's like five feet long. It's massive because it's protecting the optional 33 gallon fuel tank. 33 gallons. You're gonna need some armored protection to get that out of Barter Town. <laughs> this mid-mounted crossmember is actually removable, as well as the one that supports the back of the transmission and your Borg Warner two-speed transfer case. Up above my head is an excellent ASMR opportunity. <laughs> and also the only transmission available with this engine pairing, and it is the ZF8HP75 eight-speed automatic transmission with a maximum torque input of 750 newton meters of torque, or 553 pound-feet. Apparently, ZF also manufactured the front axle and diff for this truck. Up front, this Ram has an independent front suspension with upper and lower A-arms, and again, you can see that air suspension right there. To give you a size comparison, that's a finger. That's not a finger. And the front anti-sway bar is massive on this thing. Measures in at 35 millimeters. Pretty rugged skid plate protecting that front diff. Also, check this out. There's a bunch of holes drilled in this cross member for cooling and probably also a little bit of strength. And this thing would be super easy to work on. Look at all the room you have to access stuff right here. AC compressor. That's right here though. Not something I wanna see equipped on my truck with an off-road package. But you're just gonna get in the way. All right, time for the braking test. This one's got a tow package, so this should have some pretty healthy brakes. No one behind me? Ooh, jeez. Ooh. It was like melting cream cheese sliding down your roof. That braking was just accomplished with a 14.9 inch or 378 millimeter front rotor in a big old two pot caliper that barely fits. Look at that clearance. 
but it's so tight. And these aren't small wheels. The wheels themselves, not bad looking. They're an 18 by nine and a half, and they're wrapped in a 275-65 Falcon Wild Peak all-terrain tire. Should do pretty good off-road. In the rear, you have a 14 by eight inch or 375 millimeter rotor and a single pot caliper. And the wheel in the tire is the same size as it is in the front of the truck. Ah, plastic wheel liners, not hairy cardboard ones like that. Personally, I would never equip these on a truck with an optional off-road package. It defeats the point. In the name of science, I am now going to give this thing the mild e-beans. <laughs> I'm not gonna put it into four auto, although that is an option. I want to make this a little bit more exciting. Traction control off. Give it assistance and let it eat. Ready? Ooh, what a wheel spin. There we go. Sounds good. Sounds really good. Ooh, nice. Grab that gear quick. That's good. It's not bad. Healthy. Pop. Oh, it's got a little beak. Which struts. Weird. It's a cracker cap for your overflow. It's, it's square. I've never seen a square cap. Under the head of this 22 Ram 1500 is a 5.7 liter overhead valve Hemi V8 with a 48 volt mild hybrid system. It's old school tech meets new school tech. It's crazy, a pushrod V8 with a hybrid system. Anyway, it has 395 horsepower at 5,600 RPM and 410 pound-feet of torque at 3,950 RPM. And thanks to that 48 volt mild hybrid system, you get 130 pound-feet of torque alone available at launch when you're taking off. First thing you notice when you pop the hood is that motor generator sitting right here at the top of the accessory drive. It is paired with a 12 cell lithium ion battery at 0.3 kilowatt hours. Kind of brilliant the way it works. It's essentially a starter and an alternator in one. It works in conjunction with the start stop system by turning the engine over here via the belt and it will convert the 48 volts from that system down to 12 volts to charge the battery. It also produces electricity similar in concept to a regenerative braking system, but with engine D cell rather than with your brakes. As far as the old school goes, this 5.7 liter Hemi has a cast iron deep skirt block with a 10 and a half to one compression ratio, a 99.5 by 90.9 millimeter bore and stroke, and it is port injection only, no direct injection. The engine's fairly tucked underneath the wiper cowl here, so maintenance would be a little tricky in that department. It does have the MDS system, which is the multi-displacement. It can shut down two cylinders per bank to save on fuel, as well as it also has variable camshaft timing. You could also get this without the hybrid system, the Pentastar V6, or the three liter Eco Diesel. Let's take this thing off road now. Off-road bolstering check. There's not much bolster to these seats. They're heated and the steering wheel's heated. No ventilation. Down here by your drive selector knob, you have some buttons for your for auto, for high, for low, neutral. There's also your hill descent control as well as the electronic locking rear axle. No locking front axle on this. And I will lock the rear axle. Yep, and it lets me lock it in for high, good. Then I also have my air suspension, so I have multiple ride heights that I can select from, and I am going to put it in the highest ride height, which is off-road. Now, if I go into my infotainment system, ooh, off-road, there's an off-road section. Yeah, then I got all kinds of telemetry inside here, vehicle dynamics, steering angle, rear diff, accessory gauges, pitch and roll, wheel articulation. Oh, that's fun. I have to take this at a wide angle because of these running boards. I already know this is gonna give me issues off-road because those things greatly reduce my uh, breakover. So, let's see. I should go do it. I don't rip them off. There we go. Clean and hit. Okay. 
I'm gonna try to mix things up with this review and do a different hill climb. This one is really steep. It does not give any kind of articulation, but I do have those running boards. Oh, there's a bush over there. Yeah, this one's steep and slippery and loose. So this is a good test. At the very top, I will have to see what the breakover is like. This thing in its highest setting is just over 21 degrees. However, I don't think that's including these running boards. Uh, we're gonna do four auto, no diff locked. Give this thing some form of a challenge. Also not letting any air out of the tires. We've got uh, just over 23 degrees of approach in the highest setting. So I should go and do it. All right, taking this slow, it's gonna be a challenge. 24 degrees. Oh, it won't do it. It won't do it. Axle lock. See if that will help. Ready? Still won't do it. It's really soft right here on the side. I was trying to give this thing a challenge. I wanted it to fail because that's how you can see what the truck is made out of. You put it in imperfect situations. We'll try this again. I will use four low. Put it into four low. Super soft over there to the left. So I guess I'll try it. I'm going slow though still. I want to make this a challenge. Fall into that? Nope, it didn't. Oh, I hit my head on the camera. <laughs> All right, it made it up. Ah, just a little bit of dirt on them. At least they're rugged. I don't know about you guys, but I would rather watch a review off-road of a truck in situations that are not ideal and specially suited just to show you its capabilities. Its capabilities are in situations where it's not well suited for. If it can make it out of it, then hey, that's pretty impressive. I'm not gonna use hill descent control because I have a foot. One last hill. I know you guys would miss it if I didn't do this one. So I'm gonna do four low, diff locked. Just take it easy, it's slippery. Should be able to do it. Gently. Trail cam sucks right about now. I really wish I could see where I was going. Ooh, it's definitely bucking and hopping going up this. Four wheel drive overheated. Really? That also happened on the Jeep. No, that was the Honda. Passport overheated. I mean, to be fair, to be fair. It is 103 outside, so. Switch it into two wheel drive on the fly. Yep. And traction control off. Beans. This Hemi does sound good. It's a good sounding engine. It's actually nice over the washboards. The five link and the air suspension are great over this. So if you live out on a dirt road, it's really washboarded up all the time. Uh, this suspension pairing is actually great for this situation. Stability control is still getting a little angry at me. The backcountry package with the cloth in the center of the seats is a nice touch. I'm thankful that has cloth and not leather or synthetic leather. I think that's why this also doesn't have ventilated seats is because I don't, I don't know if that works very well with cloth. Backcountry storage. It's got a nice rubber floor mat in here. Oh, and a power inverter. I like that there's all kinds of Easter eggs in here with a little history of Dodge and Ram pickups in the center and some math and stuff under the lid. And this thing does all kinds of origami. It slides and repositions itself and well, it doesn't do it itself. You have to do it, obviously. The spare tire jack is under the front seat. I was really happy to see the little Alpine logo when I hopped in this thing. The giant screen that's in the center that is optional, uh, it gets a little cumbersome at first when you first come in here because you're just like, how do I control things? But then common sense kicks in and you see, oh look, I have buttons down the side. I'm sorry for all my flat earthers, but you're probably not gonna like this navigation system. Carefuling. 
Careful,ing mesquites. I'm in two-wheel drive. Can I do it? Yes, she can. There, I maneuvered around them. No paint was harmed. So overall, the past week I've been driving this thing. Uh, some takeaways, the fuel economy was not what I was expecting it to be with this being a mild hybrid. It got less than what it's rated at. Uh, I saw a combined of about 16.3 with mixed driving. It's dropped pretty drastically now that I've been eating this thing off-road. Personally, I don't feel like this truck needs $20,000 in options to be a good truck. I'm curious to how a Tradesman Edition would be, just with four-wheel drive, off-road package, and it's really all you need. And I bet it would be a great truck that you'd probably want to hang on to more because the tech wouldn't get outdated after five to 10 years. Time to give this thing some scores. Starting with the bean score as assessment on a one to five bean scale based on the feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. And this Ram with the 5.7 liter Hemi and e-torque system is getting a rating of 1.5 mild e-beans. It wasn't the kind of punch I was expecting from the mild hybrid system. It's mild and that's what you should expect. It's mild. It's just there to whip off the cream. I don't know about that. Next is the cookie score as assessment on a one to five scale based on what you get for what you spend. It's assessment of value. And this truck right here with almost $20,000 in options added to it at a price just under $64,000 is getting a rating of 2.4 cookies. They just went carried away with the options on this one. What I find interesting is the fact that you can get that same powertrain in a Tradesman, which is the base model Ram, add an off-road package to it, and the truck is like 43 grand. That's the way to go, in my opinion. Next is the meatball score, is assessment on a one to five scale based on a truck's off-road capabilities. And this Ram right here is getting a rating of two point five meatballs. It didn't do too bad off-road, all things considered. The only takeaway I can say, and I can't stress this enough, is don't add running boards if you're gonna pay extra for an off-road package. It gives you more ground clearance. Next is the mechanic score. It's an assessment on a one to five scale based on how difficult something would be to maintain. And this truck right here, it's getting a rating of 2.7 wrenches. The thing that's hurting that score is just how much of the engine is packed underneath that wiper cowl. But from the underside of the truck, super easy looking to work on this thing. Uh, lastly is the Penguin Score. It's an assessment on a 1-5 scale based on how much I personally like something. And this Ram right here is getting a rating of 2.5 Penguins. I wasn't blown away by the mild hybrid e-torque system on the 5.7 liter V8 when I reviewed the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon with the two liter turbo four cylinder and that system, I was impressed by it. I really was. You notice a difference, especially in a Rubicon in the fuel economy department. It's just, there's a lot of other Ram models that intrigue me and this one's just kind of average. It's a good dad truck. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this review and I'll see you soon with another. Bye.